Go. Okay, it's five o'clock. Let's call a second meeting by October. Uh, to order. <coughs> Two trustees, Mr. Crackett won't be able to join us this evening. Yeah, he'll be at the next meeting. Uh, Fire Chief, Fiscal Officer, Township, Secretary Saxton, and Road Administrator, and Carol Simmons from the Fourth Estate, join us this evening. Welcome, everyone. Um, I would entertain a motion to adopt the minutes of the meeting for October 7th, 2019. I so move. I'll second that. Is there any further discussion about those minutes? They were uh, un uncorrected in my review. Thanks. Once a year. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> Hearing that, may we vote, please? Mr. Meacher? Yes. Mr. Hollister? Yes. I now entertain a motion to approve payment of bills of $76,727.57. Broken down general fund, $2,441.70. Fire fund, $14,906.49. Cemetery, $276.60. EMS billing, $7,424.08. Road and bridge, $1,813.72. And capital project fund, $49,865. <clears throat> even. Is there a motion? I move uh, that we uh, approve payment of bills. Is there a second? I second. Any further discussion regarding that motion? I'll just uh, I note that although the total number is very high compared to past months, 50,000 of it is on the new fire station. We'll just wait for the next So year. actually, <laughs> actually, it's remarkably low mm -hmm. uh, for the other operating expenses, and I'm wondering why. Good fiscal management. I support that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, okay. I'm not really, not really that, expecting right? a strong answer. I just thought maybe there'd be some surprising bill that didn't show up. That was usually no, there. it's every once in a while there's a lull. And Expenses. Any okay. other comments? No? They would vote please. Mr. Meacher? Yes. Mr. Hollister? Yes. <clears throat> Speaking of small amounts, we have a small amount of correspondence this period. <laughs> uh, we had the uh, appraisal for this building come in. Uh, we can discuss that in like something. Um, and a, a reminder and notice from the zoning workshop, excuse me, the annual zoning. Uh, Planning and Zoning Workshop December 6th at Sinclair. Uh, we had a notice of furnishing from the J. Carr Construction. Uh, it's, it's, it's just a normal requirement from, from these contractors. Uh, nothing special. Request from uh, Regional Planning for committing 1250 towards funding the County Wide Trails pl Master Plan. Let's take that up in something else. New business? Why not? Uh, email from, I guess, myself to Brad Rui about the bond anticipation note that was not used um, in the $350,000 uh, additional uh, revenue for the new firehouse. Emails from Berman Flower about the build, builder's risk policy, which uh, I haven't had a notice is in place yet, but should be relatively soon because it's all signed and sealed. It's $4,300 for that, but it uh, protects us from uh, any damage to the building uh, while it's under construction, any loss of the uh, parts that might be on site, uh, also any, any loss if, you know, if a semi full of parts overturned in Tennessee or somewhere and, and we mm. lost a bunch of stuff, uh, we have, we have uh, coverage for that, so it's a, it's a normal thing that you have to have. Um, that would be anything that's similar to like what? Happened in at the Hard Rock Cafe Hotel in New Orleans, like the mm -hmm. building yeah. fell that. apart. Yeah, hopefully they had builders risk insurance. Yeah, okay, so it would be something like for a whole lot more than we do. Yeah, <laughs> right. Um, ours is for a total of, of course, five million. That would be the cost of the, of the, of the construction. Um, there was also a couple of things I noticed weren't there. I guess it wasn't technically correspondence, but it's generally stuff that we if we have something to work on. Uh, one is the draft resolution of necessity for the, uh, for the fire levy next spring, which we're going to put off until uh, Mark's able to join us. Just you know, he's 
so we don't need to do that tonight. Okay, good. Um, <laughs> the next is the uh, draft code of regulations for the uh, YS uh, DC. Development for the new development for the new yeah CDC uh, which we'll take up under probably old business because we've been working on that for a while. Um, those were the only two that s s struck me. I did see them, but I wasn't sure if they were. Yeah, I don't, you know, I if they were just you know yeah. if we were going to talk about it or what. Right. Okay. So uh, any other correspondence? Then we'll move along to the fire department report. All right. So this last name. I didn't get a copy here. Right? I thought I put one. Probably. It might be sitting on top of the photocopy. Oh, it's right, right next there. to the yeah, it's right next to the photocopy. I'll go grab it and start talking. Okay. Someone's talking. Uh, since the last meeting, we've had 35 EMS calls, 19 fire. Uh, neither of which were anything super significant. Uh, and 26 fire safety inspections were conducted. Uh, many of those were during street fair. Um, oh, first put that in there. Street fair came and went, obviously. It did. We haven't been since street fair, have we? No. So, yeah. Oh. <laughs> so, well, it wasn't a hugely busy day. It seemed like a big crowd, but um, we had six calls during the street fair. Mm -hmm. um, the Safety and security enhancements that we made with the village seemed to all work out very well. So we had a meeting today about that. You did? Contain, uh, we'll continue with those, the additional security and, and the different barricades and stuff we had. Um, so it all went off pretty well. We had 20 people. Working, yeah. Things, so. We've been volunteers and staff. <coughs> so went well. Went well. Uh, speaking of staff. Uh, oh, go ahead. Before you go to staff, were we going to have a line item for Bath Township responses per report? It's entirely possible. I thought so. We were. Oh, we might. <laughs> um, but I think I copied you guys on the September, September and that was actually a busier month mm -hmm. for our responses in the Bath Township. That was 12, I believe. I think we had 12 responses in Bath Township um, during the month of September. So well, let's just wonder out loud how many have we had in October to the 21st? Not that many. I see. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you mean not as many as 12? Not as many as 12. At least I don't think so. Um, I can double check that before we go to the meeting. Alright, so Bath Township, not so many. Not so many. <laughs> okay. Continue. Yeah, we're certainly not being overwhelmed by Bath Township calls. I think that is safe to say. It would be nice if all of our Bass Township calls were not at Byron Road. The furthest, yeah. For the train line at 235. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the absolute furthest possible. But, you know, as long as we get there. Yeah. Um, we're still having some issues with jurisdictional things. We had a crash at Byron in 235, and uh, I pulled up, and Fairborn pulled up. And, uh, really? Which is fine. I mean, you know, that stuff's going to happen. Fairborn's dispatcher never told our dispatcher that they were coming, though, so there was a you know, fist fight broke out on scene. It was like an old West movie. And, Oh. Um, actually, it was drizzling, and I was more than happy to let Fairborn take it. <laughs> I <thought> Fairborn <laughs> wouldn't wouldn't come outside the city limits. Yeah, into that township. They were dispatched to an address on the fourteen hundred block of Xenia Drive, which is two thirty five in the city of Fairborn. Mm -hmm. And I guess it just got caught when they didn't find it and found this crash. Mm -hmm. It was a minor crash. You know, it was very dramatic in the dispatch. There was a pregnant woman involved. When I arrived, she was out of the car smoking. And, uh, oh no. It was drizzling, and our ambulance was actually transporting another patient for a different call, so I was more than happy to. If everyone was happy to take it, and I was happy to let them happen. So <laughs> that actually worked out very well for them. So. Um, but there was no fist fighting? No, no, no fist fighting. Oh, I just scratched that out. Yeah. <laughs> Put in there the real Donny Brook, my word of the week. Um, all right, so. I'm not sure I like that word. Donny Brook? That was in Boston for two years. That was a very popular. Okay. It's a Donny Brook. Uh, staffing. Uh, so we've uh, we made a new staff member. Uh, Nate Ayers and his uh, wife Destiny had their baby on Thursday, uh, three weeks early, earlier than planned. But mom, baby, and Nate are all doing well. Um, yeah, a little volunteer way. boy or a little volunteer uh, girl? An eight-pound boy. Uh -huh. um, so he should be ready to start volunteering at least you know, five or six years. Mm -hmm. um, 
So uh, Nate will be off for his five leave, shifts of leave. Um, yeah, that's right. And hopefully we'll then come back. And then uh, Alex and his wife are due to the winter on November 7th. So hopefully we'll have any overlap between people being off. Um, I've asked them to try and delay delivery so we can make it work. But apparently this thing doesn't work that way. So, uh, <laughs> um, But I wish they and yes, they will. And young Karen Michael, <coughs> Karen yep. Michael Ayers. Uh, the next part there, we're going to put off. Does he have a little bit of kilt? <laughs> probably. <laughs> Actually, was born with a mustache too. Yeah. <laughs> <probably>. <laughs> um, and then the next thing up there, I, we're going to put off till next meeting. Yep, I will. Might as well. Mm -hmm. uh, and there you go. Okay. Then it's put off talking about the operating one. Yes. Yes. Put off talking about that. <clears throat> and I guess actually since the last day they started putting geo in the fire station, so it looks really exciting. Um, I have a question about what what impact do you think the temporary traffic experiment uh, would have on calls? Honestly, I don't think much. Um, Danny went to a meeting the chamber had before this was implemented for people and um, shared our in the fire department, um, and his biggest, our biggest concern at that point was just traffic possibly backing on to the Avenue on Short Street. But, I mean, I, I'm not overall very worried. Maybe I'm in the minority mm -hmm. of villagers, but uh, I don't really think it's going to change the world that much. Well, I was just talking about specifically. Typically, uh, when we respond to Mills Lawn, we go down Short Street yeah. and then turn a left onto <laughs> onto Walnut. So the only change for us will be that when we get to the end of Walnut. We can't take a left on the Zinni Avenue. I've told the guys that if you got your license and sirens on, it's an emergency, obviously, legally, we're allowed to make a left. But otherwise, they'll just have to weave their way around the neighborhood to get to, if we're going to green, but more and more everyone's going to swim. So, mm -hmm. if it's kids, children, so maybe that way. Anyway, so. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, I, I don't really see a big <coughs> and issue for us. So, Danny did go to a meeting before this was made public. Yes. Was, do you think? Were we really asked our opinion, or was it sort of advanced information? Um, yeah, I mean, we were asked early on in the process. Um, even, even earlier. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, I went to a meeting, well, it's still cold out, so, mm -hmm. um, at the Bryant Center, and mm -hmm. the house was there. And so last Patty at that time. Last winter. Yeah. Uh, and I talked about some, some concerns and talked about some things with the engineers, um, or whoever they were, the consultants. About the whole thing. So we were con included in the so consideration yeah. process. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Good enough. Yeah, again, I mean, that chunk of the complete street, or whatever we're calling it, the company, whichever pro plan mm -hmm. is, is, um, yeah, I mean, I, I, I don't see that having really any impact on, on how we operate. Some of the other things that have been talked about, I mean, some of the speed humps in town, and uh, the possibility of a roundabout down here. I mean, we won't be here anymore, so it won't really be a problem. Mm -hmm. yeah. Those might have some impacts, but we'll do with those as those come up. But this this project, I'm all for it. And if it helps to relieve some of the psychosis that was going on in front of those long in the morning, when you, because we have had a, we did have a fire alarm a couple times at off during that drop off, and it's, I mean, it's like trying to navigate a, you know, through a a scrum at Kroger when there's a sale at like the turkeys for Thanksgiving. So it was, uh, I'm happy to see that any improvement can be made. So. Thank you. It's not sure why people just don't walk to school. <laughs> why did they make the change? What's, the, what's it for? Well, I don't know what the It was the safety of the kids, I think. Yeah, there's a good article in the Yellow Springs News that answers all your questions. Or you can find it at ysnews.com. <laughs> It actually answered all my questions, so it's a pretty good article. It's part of the, I mean, the village did the, had a grant and did the whole comprehensive, not comprehensive plan, but whatever they're calling it, complete streets program or something. It's a so congestion it's, management yeah. experiment. There's a couple different places around town that are looking at doing things. And, yeah, it's only for three weeks. Um, looks like there's more parking, doesn't it? The parallel, it looks like there's Yeah, I think so. That will be just interesting to see because well, while I have found that many Americans cannot parallel park well, True. 
They also can't back out of the space very well. So that'll be fun to see what happens. <laughs> well, now, according to our global newspaper, that would be the LCC, uh, there were 36 parking spaces on Walnut Street, and there are now 30. Oh. That's, that's it. Huh. A net loss of six. Mm -hmm. Oh, because, but they're putting because, in a new parking area right there in front of uh, the corner of Elm and yeah. Walnut, right across from that yellow house. Right. There's going to be like eight spots. There will be there. Will be <laughs> there. But the, the reason is is because that second lane of that drop-off lane also took off yeah. all the parking uh, on that side of the street. And they didn't add as many as they right. took off. I think, it, I think we'll survive. But there is a uh, potential of as you say, of, of Elm Street being diagonal parking or, or straight in parking, I'm not sure which, all, all the way from all the way from Walnut to Phillips, basically. That whole side. It is wide. I mean, it's pretty wide in the street. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I didn't well, mean, I mean they park there mean now, the but yes. park, parking with is twenty, 20 just, feet between yeah. you know, cars. Too late. I, I my question was about whether we were consulted and what impact it would have on the fire department. Yeah, I could. I, I would be happy to give my detailed analysis of this <laughs> parking, but it's, it's not on the agenda. I, I can say that the, we work very well with the village government on, on issues like this. It, um, it got a lot, communication got a lot better under Patty Bates, and it is continuing under, under her sway and I mean, we always have really good working relationship with police and public works, but but they actually sometimes consult us for stuff that it doesn't even it doesn't affect us. I'm like, oh, well, okay, whatever. <laughs> but it's always nice to get that so that when we when something does come up that we that does affect us for when we're regular, so. Good to hear. So yeah, village. Okay. Doesn't hurt to try. Yeah. Yeah. And from my meager vantage point at the corner of El Walnut <laughs> uh, on the first day. Uh, there, you know, there didn't seem to be too many front end collisions or fires and pestilence as a result. It seemed to be relatively smooth. I didn't really see any backups anywhere. Um, so perhaps that's a, a good start. <laughs> Frankly, but there were more there were more village employees in, in green um, safety vests, I think, than there were either students or uh, or crossing guards for sure. Yeah. So yeah, I think the entire police department was out there this morning. Just I, in think, case, I think so. <laughs> yeah. I think they were expecting big things. All right. Um, let's see. New fire department. A new firehouse report. Um, <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> firehouse report. Uh, they're drilling from geo piers as we speak. Right. Uh, and will dust to dawn until they're until they're put in. Um, this is the uh, required uh, precursor to digging a foundation and starting the work um, underneath the slab for communications, for utilities, uh, for drainage, for sewer, all that stuff that goes into the slab before it gets poured. Um, but before all that happens, the stable the ground had to be stabilized and using these 187 uh, gravel piers that are drilled to different depths, somewhere between, as I recall, 6 and 12 feet, depending upon the, uh, the, the uh, condition of the subsoil underneath them. Uh, the, the deepest ones will be in the area around where the old clinic was, uh, because it's soil as you might expect, just because it was it was excavated, you know, many years ago, and then just filled back in with um, who knows what <laughs> Dodge trucks and uh, yeah. <laughs> various and sundry other things uh, that we're, we may or may not find as we drill. Um, so they had to be they had, they had, and that just happened to be also under the part of the of the firehouse where the apparatus bay is that has the most weight. Per square foot, so they, they, they kind of needed to double up on the amount. Had we not had an apparatus bay, I don't think they would have drilled half as many of those piers uh, as they're going to put in now. But, but they're they're on their way. Are they like concrete 
tubes or? Uh, no, it's it's just a uh, it's just like a big drill bit, mm -hmm. an auger that goes down the required number of feet, oh. comes back up, and a bobcat dumps a load of gravel um, oh. in there, and then a, a, a hammer. I mean, a great big hammer, this big round, goes yeah, down yeah. in there. Goes, for how long it takes. They they, then they keep topping it off until it's. Mm -hmm. Then they put another scoop in and it pounds it down and then it gets then it gets tested periodically hmm. Uh, hmm. to make sure it meets the specification for compaction. Probably is a little noisy. Yeah. Now, that's the easy part. In, in, for our purposes, that's kind of the easy part because they can do that pretty much rain or shine. It's when they're done. We're hoping that Mother Nature will work with us because once we're done, that lowered part under the apparatus bay now has to be built back up. And what, what you have to have is you have to have dry, um, first subgrade material, and then I guess they, maybe they don't put topsoil because that's underneath the slab, but I don't want to put topsoil at all. It's probably just. So good, good, compact. good compacted subgrade material, um, but it can't be wet. Uh, and if it just happened to have rained a lot, and then added, it's only 40 degrees out or 50 degrees out. That stuff's not going to dry for a month of Sundays. So what we may have to do is, if we get to that point where, okay, all the piers are in, uh, the foundation's ready to be dug, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, if we have to, we're going to spend the extra money and put um, stone in there and put gravel, heavy gravel, instead of the dirt. And that will suffice to do that. Um, or so move they, forward. So they can, instead of waiting until. It will cost more. Yeah, instead of waiting until March or April uh, to, to get you know, any more progress. Yeah. Um, that's, that's an option. So we'll see where that is in approximately two weeks. Ish. Um, the stuff that the stuff that's all necessary, the catch basins and all the rest of that stuff, the the, the pieces of the foundation that, that, that have the tubes where the utility goes and all that, all that stuff had to be had to be ordered, uh, and in the lead times usually three or four weeks for that stuff, and so they didn't order it until the the day where we signed those contracts. Remember uh, that that Thursday, I guess it was a Thursday. Um, so that's. Those things are not sitting somewhere, you know, waiting yeah. to be put in. They they probably won't be here for a few more weeks anyway. So, you know, we have a little wiggle room, and, and um, good Lord willing, it gives us a little warmth and uh, dryness. Um, we may be able to trick Mother Nature and put these things, put that dirt in, because we have the dirt available. I mean, we have a borrow pit um, still out at Cresco. And if there's not enough or it's, it doesn't test out well, the, the village farm has, a, has an area that they have uh, subgrade topsoil. It's, it's already been checked by the inspectors and it's, um, it would be, if it were dry enough and, and compacted enough, uh, it would be acceptable to you. So, We've got it if it's if it's good enough, but if it doesn't, then we'll just have to have, probably eat the cost for the for the gravel. That's what they have contingencies for. Uh, do, 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 do. What else? Um, I wanted to ask <coughs> about drainage. Uh, I got a call from a neighbor, and I just wanted to uh, confirm that. We have a drainage plan, and we have is it a retention or detention basin that will be uh, along the south border. Um, what's the difference between detention and retention? E either way, that it holds it on site. Right. Uh, we have a detention basin. It's not on the south side. It's on the um, excuse me, the east side. The east side, um, yeah. and it includes. Uh, one or two, and I think it's two dry wells, uh, which are basically nothing more than drilled down deep and then filled with gravel again. And then the, the, also the, the, the amount of material, uh, 
earth that's taken out, and there will be trees planted inside that. Uh, but that won't, people won't see that uh, until much later in the construction process. Mm -hmm. Right. So I want to assure people that, that the drainage has been analyzed, and uh, if the studies are sufficient, the, the plan is that uh, only in the extreme would there be runoff from the site. And that's a little unusual. Well, the extreme would have to be a 100-year flood because by regulation you can't allow your, your property to uh, uh, have, have water, surface water, move onto an adjoining property. Now, of course, it could be, <coughs> excuse me, designed if, if you have a, if you have a, uh, if you have a, st um, storm sewer, mm -hmm. and there are uh, two or three catch basins uh, on the perimeters that I'm sure have been taken into consideration for, uh, for use for over, overflow. Mm -hmm. But you, you simply are not allowed to design anything that, that has the possibility of, you know, that water flowing into a neighbor's yard. Yeah. So, for instance, homing is immediately to the east, it has land immediately to the east, mm -hmm. so our drainage is set up in such a way that water is not going to be sheeting over onto their property. That's correct. Uh, and the, that design uh, was done by MSA, our architects. Of course, that would be, you know, they, they subbed that out. They didn't do it themselves. But um, I think Kleinland, Kleinlingers uh, did the design for that. And the county uh, building department uh, approved it, along with their sanitary um, department. And the Bill Yellow Springs also had to approve it separately with a separate engineering review, um, which is what we paid the five hundred dollars for uh, the initial uh, building permit or zoning permit. I mean, so both jurisdictions have approved the design of it, which again, as I say, will not allow for um, overflow into into. Pretty, just wanted to make, I want to get that on video. Well, there it is. For, for, the, for posterity, or at least for a week. <laughs> um, <coughs> let's see. I'm not sure what else is really going on. We're not, we haven't settled on a brick design yet. We haven't seen a, uh, or not a brick design, but a brick color, believe it or not. Um, they've all been too dark to this point, and they are still working with local brick suppliers because we need to get this ordered. As you can imagine, it takes quite a while to, to get a few thirty or 40,000 brick together and, and bring them out. Didn't firehouses used to be red brick back in the day? Maybe? Yeah. I see. Anybody want to vote for red brick? No. Um, go for pale. Kind of like the cement board thing, or no? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Actually, we need the, believe it or not, and it was explained to me from the contractor, we need the brick earlier than, sooner than later, because uh, the way it is, the foundation, um, the brick goes down to the foundation line, and then it's, it's covered, it's graded back up um, a, a small amount, 12, 14 inches, something like that. But there does need to be brick underneath the, uh, that, that topsoil there. So anyway, we'll get it eventually. I don't know if we'll have it this Thursday, but we'll have it. Um, I'm thinking that's all there is. So shall we move on to uh, cemetery? Yes, sir. Okay. Well, we had a burial us this past Saturday. Mm -hmm. We have one tomorrow. Ashes. Good. Sorry, burial go all right? Yeah. Yeah, they were kind of late getting there. It was there. Clifton, wasn't it? No, it was up here. Oh, it was? Mm -hmm. Okay. They were kind of late getting there, but they usually are. Mm -hmm. But they didn't stay on the side of us. But yeah, everything went fine. Mm -hmm. We'll have ashes tomorrow at 2 o'clock. Uh, here? Yeah. Charlie Goodrich's daughter. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's, who, that's who we're taking care of. Yeah, really. 
much look at Tom's too, I'm not mm -hmm. sure. He said, he told me, mm -hmm. I, I would know if I seen him or anything like that. Anyway, that's just, mm -hmm. and that's about all for that. We're working on bases. We got quite a few foundations. You didn't do that yet? I'm working on them. I'm yeah. in the middle of them, getting them ready. So well, at the last meeting you thought it would be the next week. Yeah. It should have been last week. I tried, yeah. They had to do a lot more forums and people were calling and why they're basing and they had to do that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Hopefully we'll get some for this week and finish up next week. Oh. Yeah, you're fighting Mother Nature too. Oh, yeah. Uh, weather, I mean, like this, we can work with this. Yeah. I just don't need 20 degrees. Right. Yeah. We'll get them, so that's on the plan. Uh -huh. And the other ship's so clifted yet. I guess it was a question that it wasn't approved. What? Yeah. But I know it was. It wasn't approved? What was it? That was the question from Greta. That chip Sealing Chip Seal Clifton Cemetery was not approved. We voted on that. It was approved. I told her that. So. That is we being the, the cemetery. The cemetery board. There were other members that thought they didn't think it was approved. It was in the minutes. Yeah. So they're going to try to get to us, I hope, soon. It's going to be too late to do it today. What, no kidding? And I talked to her son, Matt, too. He asked me, I said, yeah, it's a go. If you can get to it. So, I hope they do. It would be nice. We're, we're ready for them if they do. That's about all I have for some prayers. Uh, the fellow who was here repairing uh, Walt headstones, mm -hmm. I never went over and about them. I, I was, I intended to go learn something, but I didn't get over there. Uh, how many stones? Did 40, 43, I think. I think you said that. Mm -hmm. I think it was about 40 something. Then some of them were pretty hard to put back together. Mm -hmm. And he picked out a few on his own. You know, we, we, I had marked out a bunch and they got all those. And, and a couple others he found. He said, I'll put this together. And one was really, really a good, big job because he had to knock all the old, some kind of cement that somebody had used on. Mm -hmm. His method won't work with that. Mm -hmm. it's so, yeah. They yeah. mark uh, with a, with a uh, orange ribbon mm -hmm. uh, each, each one of the stones that they've repaired or uh, brought back up or whatever they did. So, you know, so before they all fall off, if I could might, still learn something yeah. by going and looking. Mm -hmm. walking. Yeah, he ties a orange pink. How much did that cost us for 43? What did he charge for a week? Is it 5000 mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know if it's even or if there's a I'm not sure, part. but that number comes to mind. Mm -hmm. And he'll be sitting, he said he'd send that in those if he hasn't already. Yeah. It's not cheap, so it's not something we can do all the time, but, you know, when we feel we're in a good, good position, then. It's nice to keep up with it or make a they do nice work. Make a stab at it. Yeah. They, they do. really do. Mm -hmm. He had new crew with him this year. He, so these would tend to be stones that are how old? Oh. Old. Hundred years. Yeah, probably. Yeah. Anything broken anything broken, he'll put back together. They clean stones that they work on, they clean them up. Here. But unless there's vandalism, it would tend to be really old stones. Right. He puts them back together and even builds pieces that he can't find out of his mortar. I mean, he'll, mm -hmm. he'll do the letters and everything. He's going to be really sick. But that takes time. Mm -hmm. They've they done a nice job. Mm -hmm. I was happy. But you were happy. Yeah, I, I, I went through. I didn't see every one of them, but I took a quick pass. Most of them them. were in the older part of the mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, we don't really have anything. I know. Mm -hmm. Not much. Which, which is good yeah. to do. You know, other than, you know, a little bit of that stuff along uh, along Fairfield Pike and G, you know, that's you know, maybe it's been, it's fallen over and I haven't checked that, but. He worked one up there by that pine tree that the top's cut out of it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There was one he put it all back together. Mm -hmm. cool. yeah. I think Roger's done a little one more time. Yeah. Talk to him today and then pick up leaves, of course. Yeah, hopefully we won't wait until March. Yeah, I hope so too. We can discuss that today. Mm -hmm. Good. So. Okay. Well, that's it for cemetery. Okay. Well, how are your roads? Roads are good. Mm -hmm. Our fogging is done. Yeah.
Did you get a look? I didn't, I didn't get a chance. I was out of town this weekend. I would have. Uh, Everything looked nice. Yeah, right. Well, you said it was coming. They came. They conquered. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> ship seal and the fog really looked nice this year. I thought they did a pretty good job. We didn't have an excess of material up there. You know how they always have done a better job this year keeping the excess picked up. Yeah, we, we talked about that when you were on vacation. And, and you're right, they didn't. But to that point also, uh, a week after they were done, you know, this is lead through. Yeah, there was some black, you know, some black mark coming through already. And that's probably excess emotion that worked up because mm -hmm. it, it probably was a little of course, light there in those areas. But mm -hmm. ne next year it'll, you know, it'll get fog, but mm -hmm. usually you see a, a good solid, you know, a good solid layer for a little while till, till a lot of traffic gets gets pushed down. But this was pretty quick after. Yeah, I saw a couple spots. Canyon was one. That's a, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think it'll be okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, what holds up? Um, we get some tires on the truck. Mm -hmm. Yes, you do. So I'll get some prices. Yeah, take care of some, some decent balancing or alignment because at 60 miles an hour, you can hold on to the it, steering wheel. That's in a tire, so. Yeah. yeah. I know. Well, so. I'm going to check with that. Is it Richard and Zenia? Some of the other townships are using. Right. Instead of Detroit. Yeah, and keep go, go past the Yeah, so you get a better deal or get a free deal. So. Uh -huh. Yeah, it's the same. The guy used to own Detroit. He used to own Detroit. And the old debbie's other place. Oh. Yeah, he's undercutting. So I need to pay a visit and get some prices. Yeah, I don't know if you get good prices. I will. You need two more tires for whichever you want. Yeah, everybody says they beat and beat our, our current supplier. Let's see what they can do. Mm -hmm. And they do, they do the government bid too. So. Yeah, that's how we got to. Or they do it all. Yeah. You want both of them? We'll get price tires for both. Or just, I only need four or no four. I was going to say, I haven't looked at the older ones. The, the rears are more, the fronts aren't too bad. We could move them to the back somewhere. Mm -hmm. I don't know. What's the condition of the older truck for winter? Because you've had it hooked onto that trailer all year, all summer. Oh, it's okay. We just need tires. Hydraulics working? And, yeah. Uh, no, I haven't had the blade hooked up to it. You know, all the hoses are fine. So. All the welds for the bed mm -hmm. strong. Mm -hmm. All the hydraulics. We'll do a, not we'll do a check over before we. I need to check it out anyway. Hopefully we won't need to put a pile on it even last year. Mm -hmm. Hopefully. I'm hopeful that we won't. Just be mild. Because we listen to you. Yeah. Let's see. Okay. How's your salt? Good. We've still got some over back. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. 75 or 80 tons right over there. That's to the left over last year? Mm -hmm. I didn't order anymore yet because he hadn't ordered anymore yet. Mm -hmm. so, and what he'll do, he'll order an extra hundred in case I didn't need them. Mm -hmm. That's kind of what we did. So we'll pay for it to get it. Mm -hmm. okay. You've been taking Fridays off? I didn't notice. Well, I didn't, but um, uh, this Friday I am. I have Dr. Torch the pistol officer. Mm -hmm. I have a resolution amending appropriations, which is probably going to happen every meeting to the end of the year. It's that time of year when things get, things get. But um, actually, 
I'm a little, uh, I'm not sure that this resolution is accurate. Mm -hmm. Well, because of the capital fund um, thing that I did. Mm -hmm. Oh, I see, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you can't do that. And, and, well, it, let's, a, let, let's, a, um, uh, if you can, if we can adopt it, sans the uh, capital fund amendments on there. Can we do that? Okay, you're the one who's reading it. Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, this is an amendment to um, of um, permanent appropriations, whereas an um, ongoing process to accurately appropriate funds according to needs of township. Now, therefore, the trustees authorize amendment to the following permanent appropriations, and that is in the fire fund to increase training to services to five hundred dollars by five hundred dollars and increase. Repairs and maintenance by 2000. And the trustees authorize the fiscal officer to do so immediately. I move adoption of this resolution. Okay, I'll second that. And uh, just to clarify for everybody, especially Don, what we're talking about in the capital fund is uh, we have a. Um, that is we why have, we're deleting it. Yeah, we have a, a pending invoice from MSA for roughly $50,000. Um, which includes uh, almost 40000 that they owe WDC and then twelve for their own work that they did um, uh, recently uh, getting up and running here for the, for the construction. And the way, uh, yeah, the way we can pay things from USDA, now you know, if we're paying it out of somewhere else, uh, some other fund, that's a whole entirely different matter. But if we want USDA to pay us, we need to submit the, um, the invoice to them. They will authorize it, and then they will transfer money to our account in order, and then we'll pay it at mm -hmm. that point. Um, and if we pay something in advance of that, we can't get reimbursed through their system. Well, I, I think we could, but we have to be careful. and. and Margaret's going to figure this out. We have money in this account. The, prop, the, the, the difference is the money that's in that account is, is tax money from the county that's put into, that's, that we're collecting all along. We haven't been paying for anything because we haven't been spending anything to speak of. So there's a pot of 300, 400,000, something like that. Somewhere in that. Well, that's just it. If you look at it, your appropriations line in the revenue accounts, it's uh, see, you know, the revenue um, dollar amounts are established at the beginning of the year, and um, and they're established by the um, the budget commission, you know, the county and everything, and, and so uh, it was confusing to me since this is all new to me how to pay these bills anyway, what kind of money we actually had in this account, and um, so anyway, I was. It's hard to explain. I can't. I can't really. All I can say is that the money that's in there is the money that's only generated through our property tax collections, and that money we need to pay back our interest um, charges to the USDA. Like we owe um, sixty-four thousand dollars to the USDA November first, and we've already paid about the same amount of money. So I, I was confused on where this money's going to come from to pay for these bills, and now Chris explained to me that. They'll, you know, as soon as I pre we provide invoices on these these what, bi weekly meetings, um, then they will put the money in our account and then I pay that way. Yeah, so. this this four hundred fifty six thousand eight hundred sixty nine dollars, uh, that's that's money from the from the levy that's been accruing since the levy was Which accruing. Line item are you quoting? Forty nine oh one miscellaneous capital project. Okay. And you know, had we started building this this building. Um, approximately the same time that this levy took effect, we that that line would be zero. Well, it might not be zero because we owe we owe something. But um, every six months, we're going to owe money to USDA, and yeah, that money, will, money that money will come out of this this fund right here. So anyway, um, but from now on, the contractors will be submitting invoices for tens of thousands of dollars, perhaps hundreds of thousands of dollars uh, every month 
until this is completed, and those invoices will all be uh, reviewed on, on our Thursday meetings and approved, hopefully, on our Thursday meetings. And then USDA will take them, take all those invoices back to their office, and by the following Thursday, have had money transferred from the U.S. government into our account. So then the following Thursday... And will it be the same line? Margaret will pay for it. Uh, yes, it will be the same line. Um, well, it, well, the same line you mean is a general, general property tax? Uh, yeah, yeah. It's the capital projects. Right, change. but if you look at our revenue status, um, I did receive 30000 and change um, for bills that I had submitted to the USDA. Mm -hmm. And... Um, um, and then they paid, they put, they deposited in our account. And I, I think I put it in the wrong line item. I don't think, I mean, it's easy to fix this. Um, I think I put it in the intergovernmental receipts, but that's non-federal, it says in parentheses. And maybe it should be under sale of bonds. I don't know. David Graham helped me set this, this, um, this account up. And it, since I'm so, since I'm learning something new, mm -hmm. <laughs> maybe, you know, I need to, I might need to move some numbers around. Not that it's going to change the bottom line, but. I just want to make sure it's on. You see the sale of bonds. Yeah, mm -hmm. does, does that mean that's when we've they've sold a bond and given us the money? Mm -hmm. So that so that thirty seven thousand up there. Anyway, I need to probably look at this. So that's okay. that well, that all explains why I want to we want to amend this. Uh, well, um, we did. We, yeah, we didn't even amend it. We yeah. crossed it out before you read it. Yeah. Right. And I'm just you know further explaining my. <laughs> Have we had a vote on this? No. No. Any further discussion regarding this resolution? Hearing none, may we vote, please. Mr. Major? Yes. Mr. Hollister? Yes. Well, thanks for making a point of explaining that to me. I'll explain it further once I know what I'm talking about. Um, okay. What else? Anything special? Um, so, so this Thursday is when we need to have any invoices that are outstanding, but <coughs> this one's the only one that we have so far, I believe. No, this Thursday or any of those Thursdays, nothing will be generated from us, although it could be. Oh. But it's when the contractors come and they want to get paid for their payroll and for anything that they purchased, all of that, all of those sorts of things. That's but every, the MSA, that's every fourth Thursday. But the MSA one. Right. Or the first Thursday. Of no, it's. It's either this Thursday or the next Thursday. But, but anyway, they need to, that MSA one that they sent us. So <coughs> we can give them. No. Uh, well, check with Cindy. Check with Cindy. That's a good See idea. whether she wants it sent right to her, which that's what I would think, as opposed to this okay. like, the construction okay. one. Okay. Yeah, that's a good idea. I'll call her. Okay. And if we had had a general contractor, it would be much simpler. Mm -hmm. It would. It would take a quick And more expensive. Right. Anything else? No, except that I'll be out of town Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday. So I'll have whatever I need for that meeting if there's something. If that means it's Thursday, I'll have that ready before I go. Mm -hmm. I wanted to just mention uh, how pleasantly surprised I am, I guess I'm not really surprised because I obviously I, I look at this stuff all along, that we are this far into the year and have uh, this much potential uh, unexpected, un unexpended expenditures to uh, that will carry over into 2020. Uh, we will carry over approximately a quarter of a million dollars in the general fund and I'm very well aware that we, you know, we have to make this last until April, but I'm put, taking that into consideration. Um, I have approximately 128,000 plus in the gas tax, which uh, will carry over virtually all of that. Uh, 67.4 in Road and Bridge, we won't carry too much over, but probably 30 plus thousand. Um, both cemetery accounts, we get, we have. 72.6 in the in the cemetery, um, we'll have to pay for the monument and probably one. I'm not sure we even have to pay one more 
to civil services. Could we pay that like last year? We did pay one. So yeah. yeah so yeah. we'll have a good chunk of that uh, to take over into next year, which we're going to hopefully go into this Oak Grove edition. Um, fire fund. Uh, there's 396 in it right now. We'll probably take a quarter of a million into 20. 2020. Um, I don't see any huge, huge expense between now and then. It would take that down much more than that. Um, a fire EMS, uh, there's 165 in there now. I'm sure that'll roll over uh, roughly 100,000 worth. Uh, so uh, that, uh, that puts us in in my opinion, in really good stead for going into to 2020. <laughs> this class, I'm not complaining. I really am. That's what things we need to celebrate. <coughs> okay, we'll celebrate. Yes. <laughs> we have a party. That's what it's all That's what I'm saying. All right. Anything else for sponsors? No, sir. All right. Thank you very much. Zoning inspector's report. What are we going to do? What are we going to do in zoning? I didn't think we were going to do No, that's just the first of the month. Okay. Oh, the master trail plan, kind of, I don't know, just because it's regional planning and courting. Um, let's do it there. Did I have a chance to review that? Or not? Resolution to. Is this resolution to pay for our share of mm -hmm. regional planning commissions? Yeah, four hundred fifty dollars. Mm -hmm. And I just want to say, uh, I did read that. Regional planning does a lot of work. I mean, uh, I'm involved with it, and I know the amount of work they do. <coughs> and at least for um, Miami Township, we don't pay a whole heck of a lot. We pay five hundred dollars a month, or five hundred dollars a year, to belong to regional planning, and uh, I think we certainly get, as a regional organization, we get our money's worth out of them. And I don't know where it is, but anyway, uh, they are currently involved with, and they've only got two employees, as you know. They've got just kind of got them, um, and they are uh, involved with trying to finish up uh, the uh, master trails plan for the county, which will be incorporated into the uh, new county comprehensive plan, which they're also working on and fortunately have had a $50,000 contribution from the Green County Commissioners towards the completion of that and um, will get in-kind services from um, from MVRPC for their planners that are working on it of uh, 30,000, I believe. But anyway, the, the, they are asking for a one-time uh, $1,250 contribution from each political jurisdiction within um, regional planning to complete the thorough, the county master Thir not thoroughfare, master trail. parks and trails plant. <laughs> I couldn't get that out. <laughs> but anyway, um, I think that's a reasonable request and uh, it certainly is a one time request. And we haven't done much uh, financial, additional financial. Um, Contributions to regional planning. Uh, would well, you like a motion? I would. I move that we uh, contribute one thousand two hundred and fifty dollars to Green County Regional Planning Commission to complete the uh, parks and trails plan that you just described. Uh, second that. Any further discussion regarding that motion? Bring that member vote, please. Mr. Hollister? Yes. Mr. Meacher? Yes. Thank you. And I will find that request in my little pile. So we'll take that out of the general fund? Uh-huh. Okay. 
Um, we have standing committee reports for the past month. Uh, MBRPC did not meet in October. Um, they will meet in November. I do want to take the opportunity to make a sad announcement, a very sad announcement. The current chairman of um, the board, the commission I should say, uh, Mr. John Beals, uh, a uh, city councilman from Centerville, uh, passed away uh, abruptly, unexpectedly, on a golf course this morning. Wow. Um, wow. Yeah, in a very similar manner that uh, our former uh, township trustee, John Neeson, uh, passed away in that quickly. Uh, Except he was in the shower. Yeah, true. He was in the shower. They're probably both doing something they like, you know, yeah. it's going to be clean. Uh, so, don't know anything about any arrangements. Uh, we will hear as that comes up. As, as a vice chair of the commission, where does that put you? Well, it puts me as now interim chairman until, um, uh, until the, uh, until the board uh, either fills his remain he has a he has a one year of the two year term he has one year 2020 to remaining um, I have no idea what the whether it'll just you know realign the realign the terms and and I'll then take the two years from 2021 20 or if they want to be consistent with something then they would in an interim for 20, and then I would begin my normal term of 21. I would expect it would be the uh, former, not the latter, but we haven't, we haven't really. Uh, well, of course, uh, two years ago when um, uh, when the when the current chair was not reelected, uh, he didn't run, but was reelected for his office, and then of course had to retire or resign with the office. Uh, John, the, the, the first vice chair at the time, then moved into his position, did fill that second year, which would have been, which was this year. And so anyway, it, as I say, that's probably how that will go. But it's, so the chair of the what board? MBRPC. Board. Uh, well, it's a commission. Okay. Because it's Regional Planning Coordinating Commission, and he was he was the chairman of the commission. Okay. He passed away as well. Yeah. Uh, um, and then, um, then there's the director, the gentleman who was. Right, right. Martin. Martin. He's yeah, the that's why I was getting a little confused. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the other ones are, you know, elected people. They, they do it. There was no compensation for those those positions. Brian's a full time person. Um, Green County Regional Planning Coordinating Commission met last month. Go to meet again. Uh, executive committee today. Last last month um, was a was a combined executive commission and and full commission meeting. Uh, it was really there weren't any uh, planning or zoning uh, work involved. It was uh, it was a, a adopting the budget uh, and uh, reviewing the work they're doing. Both on the trails and on the um, uh, the new updated long term planning, and MBRPC people were there, and they updated us as to what they were doing. And we'll get more of that this week. Uh, seems to have uh, put the new put the cemetery. Put the cemetery. Nothing new. Um, you guys going to meet before the end of the year? I'm not yeah, sure. Yeah, after, after harvest. After harvest. Uh -huh. okay. <laughs> where, that's where the, uh, the chair of the board is. Sometimes sooner. No, well, yeah, sooner, but yeah. Yeah. Definitely going to meet for the end of the year. Um, the wise DCD Corporation <laughs> update. 
Well, okay, laugh, laugh if, if you will, but we're going to change the name <laughs> Go to something easier to... Because uh, Chris can't spit it out. Because I can't uh, laugh and spit it out. Uh, but we'll anyway, change <laughs> anyway, one of the requirements uh, moving along is the, is the adoption by the, the political subdivisions that are on the, um, on the foundation's corporate records, and that would be the Yellow Springs uh, Village Council, the Yellow Springs uh, School Board, and the Miami Township Board of Trustees. Um, and they need to adopt for their boards the Code of, Reg code of Regulations for the uh, Community Development Corporation before we make this submittal to the federal government, the IRS, for a 501c3 designation. So, Don and I have reviewed the uh, draft code of regulations, and I would uh, entertain a motion to adopt those uh, regulations. I, I move adoption of the, or approval of the draft code of regulations of the Yellow Springs Community Development Corporation as uh, sent to us. Okay, well, actually, <laughs> I find a resolution oh, that I okay. wrote in, in that effect. So, what would be our next resolution number? Uh, 41. All right. I believe that comes after 40. Great. <laughs> yeah, Let me read it. Okay. Whereas the Board of Trustees is required to adopt a code of regulations, now therefore be it resolved to authorize and adopt the code of regulations attached hereto as Exhibit A. And it's, uh, it's pretty conventional corporation bylaws. But because, as, well, I made the motion then. Okay. Well, I'll I second. started discussing. We haven't. Even <laughs> okay, I'll I'll second the uh, adoption of the resolution 2019 41. Is there any further discussion regarding that? Well, just that it's it's a little unusual since we're we're endorsing the adoption of a code of regulations for another corporation, except we are sort of constituent. We appoint part of the board and the the whole structure of a community improvement corporation, which this intends to be, is that the constituent government bodies uh, are sort of coming in as partners. We each, the village, the school board, uh, and the township are naming part of the board, and then we are also in these uh, Regulations, uh, they're, but they're also specific outside appointees representing the college. Help me out. Chamber of Commerce, um, the um, Community Foundation. Uh, those are the ones that are. Those are the ones that are actually Probably listed. But the village and the township, perhaps the school board, uh, also has the ability to nominate an additional member at large sort of yeah, citizen. Yeah. But with a with a township, you know, title as their representative. So I was, I was just trying to explain why we're endorsing somebody else's essentially bylaws, mm -hmm. code of regulation. And in a meeting in the not too distant future, we hope that there will be a designation uh, of this group to be our designated economic development arm. Doesn't have to be, we could do anything we want by ourselves, but it needs to be a designated community investment corporation. So, maybe. Vote, please. Mr. Mutcher? Yes. Mr. Hollister? Yes. I'll get you a clean copy of the... Uh, we might 
also to say part of our interest in this is that in earlier discussion about the fate of this building, <laughs> the old firehouse, uh, that these we may uh, be able to sell through uh, the new corporation. Sell to the new corporation. Yes. Who would then sell it in the open market? And, and, and that we've already talked about that in detail mm -hmm. on the record. Yep. Okay. What else we got? Uh, oh, the complete census committee. Any updates on uh, that? Yes. I, I don't know the exact hours, but the census is hiring, and uh, today is the 20th? First. 21st. Okay, tomorrow in Xenia at the I believe it's the Xenia Library, anyway, up, up on Facebook and uh, up on the Xenia Gazette uh, website. And did the Yellow Springs News have a story about hiring for census? Um, you can apply for census jobs online at this, I don't know, off the top of my head, the census website. But you also can go in person and uh, apply tomorrow in Xenia. Uh, but that doesn't close the door after uh, the, they'll still be hiring. Uh, the real action is going to be late winter, early spring. Uh, there may be as many as 450 people hired in the county. So, so wow. There's at least, you know, be going, walking door to door where people didn't already fill out the forms. Uh, so I've been going to every couple months uh, a complete census committee meeting. Uh, don't really have a, a very active role other than trying to spread the word. Mm -hmm. uh, it's an average of a minimum of twelve hundred dollars per person in the county gets distributed from different federal programs based on our population. So uh, it's in our interest to count everybody who was here in March of 2020. College students, homeless people, folks who were, uh, a number of families in Beaver Creek whose home is in Beaver Creek, but because of the tornadoes, they're now living, living in another jurisdiction, mm -hmm. but their kids are still going to the Beaver Creek schools. And, uh, that's an extreme example of, of the kinds of things that we're addressing. I'm on another committee that, as a township trustee, uh, I'm actually not starting until November, but I'll be the Green County Solid Waste District's mm -hmm. Policy Committee, mm -hmm. which does the planning for recycling and uh, trying to reduce solid waste going to a, a landfill near Cincinnati. Um, and uh, that will touch on our township because the, <clears throat> the households that are outside of cities in the, in Green County make up a real, only 7% I'm told of the solid waste collection but most of those uh, households there's there's no recycling offered uh, how to better serve those households uh, how can the Green County Solid Waste District better serve mm -hmm. those households uh, in the you know, various kinds of recycling? And for instance, this Thursday, there's a, a tire uh, drop-off where you, uh, they make it extra convenient and only a dollar a tire to, to turn them in. Uh, so I'm actually kind of excited 
So I'm then going to be the, the township uh, representative from all the townships uh, in the county on that committee. So I'd like that added to the reports. So Green County. Let's call it Solid Waste District. Or Solid Waste District Policy Committee. That's the view. We'll work on that. <laughs> we'll work closely with the YSCDC. <laughs> Any else, Doc? No. Uh, one last on the ten committees. I'm, you know, I think I mentioned somewhere along the line. I'm the temporary. I am a temporary representative to the Yellow Springs uh, Long Range Comprehensive Plan update. I'm on the steering committee, and we did meet last week and uh, moved along with uh, with the work of the of the steering committee and the comprehensive plan update. Uh, specifically for that meeting. Uh, there was a prior meeting about a month ago at the, at the uh, Mills, Mills Lawn where um, 50 plus, I think, members of the community uh, gathered and gave their recommendations on um, priorities that they wanted to see for um, a new comprehensive plan and we re reviewed some of those. They pretty much went right down the line is what you might expect. Um, very interested in, in seeing Antioch continue, very interested in seeing green space continue, very interested in seeing economic development, uh, residential development, um, safe streets, better police, uh, you know, nothing that was, uh, I thought, out of, much out of the ordinary. So, who knows? So I thought I'd let you know. Any new business this evening? Dan, you got any new business? For sure. Any old business? For sure. Dan, I think we done. should be adjourned. <laughs> so be it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> the official word from Margaret. <laughs>